Member from Maine, Mr. Golden's recognized five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to start by looking back to May of last year uh, and point out that a bipartisan group of members of Congress, including members of this committee, have sent the administration letters, uh, and that's gone on uh, since April of last year all, over, all the way right up to right now, calling for the supply of advanced military uh, capabilities to Ukraine quite consistently. So 10 months ago, a number of us uh, called for anti-ship missiles, HIMARS, Abrams tanks, uh, as well as training on and transfer of F-16s. About five months ago, uh, a once again, bipartisan group of members of this committee uh, called for a long-term defense commitment to Ukraine to include surface air missiles, MLRS, anti-ship missiles, howitzers, and again, training on and transfer of advanced aircraft such as the F-16. Now, in my opinion, these letters represent uh, deferring opinions, policy opinions, uh, about the speed at which the United States should seek to deliver advanced fighting capabilities to the battlefield. Uh, in, in Ukraine. Now, I, I really appreciate the conversation that's been going on. Uh, just thinking about things such as F-16 or Attackums or previously uh, Abrams uh, or HIMARS, I, I think what we have seen is that there are sometimes policy uh, questions and debates and deferring opinions. Then there are logistical challenges, uh, maintenance, uh, and the training and capabilities of the Ukrainian fighters themselves. Uh, different than policy uh, uh, opinions uh, of a deferring nature. Uh, and of course, there, I respect the uh, opinion brought forward by Dr. Uh, Carl about uh, authorizations, appropriations, and how do we get the greatest ROI on the money that you have uh, in hand right now uh, to meet the top priorities uh, of uh, the Ukrainian military. But uh, Certainly, given enough money, they would prefer to have their top five or top six or top ten uh, needs or capabilities met. Uh, and the conversation about authorizations and appropriations is really, uh, I think, a question for, for Congress uh, as opposed to questions of, of policy or, or logistical concerns and challenges. Now, uh, of course, over the weekend, the president, the president's national security team said, now's not the right phase of the war for providing Ukraine advanced aircraft. That sounds like a policy uh, decision. Uh, and they have also pointed out that the assessment of military commanders advising the president is that we need to focus on tanks, armored personnel carriers, and infantry fighting vehicles and, and such. I don't think anyone disagrees with that, uh, uh, sir. And you, you've articulated uh, really that this is about how much money do we have now? What's the greatest need that they have? Uh, but Ukraine has articulated a desire to advance their uh, long-range fighting capabilities in the form of ATACMs and, and F-16s. So uh, over, just about over a week ago, the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, U.S. European Command, briefed members of, of Congress, uh, sent an in-house reportedly, and said that uh, he believed we should send aircraft, drones, ATACMs to enhance the deep fight uh, capabilities of the Ukrainian military. Uh, setting aside all the concerns uh, about logistics or maintenance uh, or the readiness of the Ukrainian military, General Sims, would you agree with his assessment that this would help Ukraine to win the war ultimately? Sir, I have no doubt that the continued provision of advanced commissional weapons would, would help Ukraine on the battlefield, no doubt. Um, and, uh, and I certainly have been extraordinarily impressed, as most have, with General Kaboli's work in, in Europe. Um, on this side of the Atlantic, the conversation continues to, to be around, uh, certainly about policy decisions, but sure. what the, in our conversations with the Ukrainians, as, as recent as yesterday with uh, General Zeluzhny and the chairman, uh, we do hold fast to the view that what they need right now are the things in front of them, that, that F-16s sure. as an example would not help them today, um, but things like air defense, artillery, uh, fighting vehicles, tanks is what we need to ensure we're providing. So you, you don't agree with the UCOM commander that possession of F-16s and ATACMs and other long-range capabilities would help them to win the war? No, sir. I, I think that advanced conventional weapons would help anybody win yeah, a war. Absolutely. Uh, yes, is there a policy objection to giving them longer-range fires at this time? So I think we both the F-16s and the ATACMs issues, I think, are slightly different, slightly different animals right. in, in this general. Issue. Is there because a policy the, objection? No, because the F-16s issue is less about a long-range capability. I think there is a general recognition that it will make sense for them over time to transition to fourth-generation right. aircraft. So it's more about the trade-offs. The ATACMs Just a few question. more seconds, but just with that, I, I would just point out, why not expand this conversation beyond the near term and the limits of the mm -hmm. dollars that you have in your possession now and come to Congress with a plan that includes near term, medium term, and long term, given that whether they win the war now 
or it drags on for several more years, the Russian threat will still remain. So I just think we got to expand the conversation. Happy to brief you on that. And frankly, if you come to the classified session, we can also provide some more uh, details on, because we have done some analysis on kind of the future Ukrainian force and what that might look like. Thank you, Mr. Times expired. Chair, and I